react to every other food. Other people don't live like this as well. I love my food. I feel like they don't get it the first time I say it. I can only eat 14 foods, and yes, I really do mean only 14. That means I can't have pasta, I can't have rice, I can't have bread, I can't have most fruits, I can't have most vegetables. I know when I tell people I can only eat 14 foods, I feel like they don't get it the first time I say it. They don't quite comprehend what I'm saying, but I do react to every other food. I have a condition called mast cell activation syndrome that causes my immune system to basically react, sort of like an allergic reaction to every other food except for those 14. I'm going to show you every single one of them and tell you about them. Sort of like a show and tell. So let's start with proteins. So the first protein I can have is white fish. Now this is mahi mahi, which is what I eat most days because it's a lower fat fish. And because of some other issues I have, I do have to keep it more lower fat for my diet. So mahi mahi is usually my go-to, but I also will do things like sole, especially if I'm out at a restaurant, typically they don't have mahi mahi, but a lot of restaurants will have something like sole or cod. Now the second and only other protein meat I can have is turkey. I buy it frozen as ground turkey, that way it has no other preservatives in it. And actually about three years ago, I wasn't eating turkey at all because I thought I was reacting to it. But that was just because the turkey I was buying was ground turkey from the grocery store that had other preservatives in it. And I just didn't realize at the time that I was reacting to the preservatives, not the turkey itself. Same with cold cuts turkey, like the slices that you can just buy at the grocery store. I was eating that a lot, which I was reacting to, which again, that has a lot of not only preservatives, but also when food is just preserved like that, when it's already been cooked, it can increase the amount of histamines in the food, which also caused me to react. So for a long time, I just thought I was reacting to turkey when really it was the preparation and the form that it was in, not the actual food itself. So now I'm very glad because it's definitely one of my favorite things. I have it for breakfast every single day and that's probably my favorite meal. So I'm very happy that I can have it. Next category is vegetables. The first one I actually don't have any of right now, but it's zucchini. I typically eat it as noodles, I'll spiralize the zucchini or I'll chop it up and put it in the air fryer. The second vegetable and fourth food is green beans. I actually get the question a lot if I ever get sick or bored of foods or if there's any foods that I'm not allergic to that I just don't like. And that's not true right now, but green beans was something that I was eating it every single day and I was eating it so often and I was just boiling them and then eating them plain that they started to give me the ick. One day I just ate them and I was like, this is actually so disgusting. So I took a few months off of eating green beans and then I went, when I went back on them again, I started air frying them, which definitely tastes a lot better and makes me not get that ick because I feel like I still have in the back of my head the memory of them tasting really gross, but that was when they were just boiled. So air fried green beans is much better fifth food and last vegetable or i guess it's a fruit i don't know cucumber i think pretty sure it's technically a fruit but you know we're gonna call it a vegetable because it's green and it's not sweet so vegetable cucumber i get very picky about my cucumbers because i am just eating them plain most of the time so i can taste if it's like slightly off or if it just tastes different than cucumbers usually do so i'm very picky about them and i know a lot of people are like cucumber is a cucumber it doesn't taste weird it doesn't taste different but to me it does because most people are putting i don't know soy sauce or some type of sauce on it or they're putting it in a salad or they're putting it in a sandwich or they're dipping it in hummus but i'm just eating it plain just like this so i can really taste the differences next up first fruit and what sixth food we've got limes limes are basically the reason why my food tastes good and why my food actually tastes like anything I squeeze limes on everything. I'm pretty sure yesterday I bought 10 limes and I only have three left. So I've had seven limes in the past 24 hours. They're really great. My only issue with limes is they are the enemy because I don't react to the lime juice, but I do react to the oils in the skin, in the peel. So when I'm squeezing a lime, the oils get all over my fingers and then my hands start to itch. And if I don't wash my hands and then I eat food and my fingers touch the corners of my mouth, I'll get like hives and itchiness around my lips and my mouth. So I love limes and I won't stop eating them because of that, but that annoys me a lot. It also means I can't buy pre-squeezed lime juice because I don't actually know if the lime oils are in it. There's no way to tell. They don't disclose that because it's not something that most people want to know or need to know. 
for any reason. Next we have olive slash olive oil. I typically do just have olive oil because it's very hard to find olives that don't have any type of preservative in it. But recently I did find some that just have salt and water, but they weren't very good. So I'm just gonna stick with the fact that it's olive oil. I use olive oil to cook all my food and you know put on it to taste good and add flavor. And I recently found my favorite olive oil in a squeezy bottle, so I'm kind of obsessed. It's like when I was younger, I always wanted to buy the honey in the cute bear bottle, but my parents wouldn't buy that honey. But now that I'm an adult, I can just buy things because they're cute. And since I can't buy honey, I just buy the cute olive oil. Actually, I take that back. I literally do have the cute bear honey and I solely bought it because I saw it and it was cute. I don't think I've ever used it. I think my friend may have used some once when she came over. And I mean, that's the reason I have some other foods in my kitchen is because other people could have them when they come over. Because when someone comes over and they're like, I want a snack. And then I'm like, you can have a cucumber. It's not very helpful, not very nice. So yeah, I've got honey and it, it's cute. Finally got the cute bear. Back to fruits, number eight, we have raspberries. I don't have any fresh raspberries right now, but I do have some freeze-dried raspberries. I can actually have freeze-dried fruit. I found that freeze-dried is fine, but dried fruit isn't. I know dried fruit, the drying process, it, it causes a lot of histamines to build up in the food. So that's probably why I react to it because I know that I do have quite a strong reaction to histamines and that's probably one of the main problems I have when it comes to my MCAS. So, but I've found that freeze-dried raspberries or freeze-dried fruit in general is fine or at least much better. I think it has something to do with the process. I know that when something is dried versus freeze-dried, it's exposed to much more heat and air for a longer time and that's a much better environment for bacteria to thrive and grow which can lead to the histamines increasing. So anyways, I really like to have freeze-dried raspberries, crush them up, put them on my chia seed pudding in the morning, use them for things like that. Um, when I make sorbet type of things, put it on that as well. It's just a really great topping, really great thing to have. I don't love them by themselves because they are a bit tart and I prefer sweeter things. I definitely have a sweet tooth, but yeah, raspberries. Number nine, grapes. These are actually frozen grapes. I love frozen grapes. They remind me of high school as well. My high school had an ice cream freezer in the cafeteria and every single day they would put, they also had fruit cups and they would put some of the grape fruit cups into the ice cream freezer. So after school, me and my friends used to go and get a thing of frozen grapes while we were waiting for the bus to go home and we would share the frozen grapes. So that's definitely something that I missed when I couldn't have grapes. So now I can have grapes, always got frozen grapes in the freezer. Food number 10, because a year ago it was only nine. That was the lowest number of foods I've ever had. And so since it's increased to the double digits, very happy about that. But anyways, this is also not in order of the nine. So those nine were not the nine that I could have before. Um, but anyways, number 10, pears. This is an Asian pear. I've been really loving Asian pears lately. I love the crunch and the juiciness of them compared to other pears. I also feel like you can't go wrong with an Asian pear, whereas at least the ones I've gotten recently of other types of pears, they're never ripe enough. So yeah, Asian pears. I'm actually so excited to eat this later. It's so nice and cold and I know it's going to be amazing and juicy and crispy. Number 11, the sad watermelon. Sad because there's only two pieces left. If you couldn't tell, I need to go grocery shopping soon. Watermelon is my newest food that I've been able to have. It's been, I think about two months since I've been able to have it, but it's been game changer. It's such a good food. I feel like it is a favorite food of mine and was in the past. And it's so fun to go and pick out the different watermelons, cut it up, eat the watermelon slices. I made this amazing drink with the watermelon, an amazing sorbet type of thing. So I've been testing out the sorbets with my Ninja Creamy. Number 12, dates. This was actually the 10th food that I got once I went from the nine foods to starting to increase. This was the first, first food that I increased to. And that was when I realized and sort of found out that there was potential to start introducing more foods. It's crazy because it's actually been almost exactly a year since I've been able to have dates again. It was at this event that happens once a year and I'm about to go to that event next week. So that's actually crazy to think about that it's been an entire year, but I absolutely love dates. I actually keep most of them in the fridge because I like when they're colder and chewier. Again, like I said, I have a sweet tooth, so 
dates were a huge game changer for me because before that there weren't really any source of sugar or carbs in my diet because the fruits were the things that I was, have been able to introduce over the past year. My favorite is probably the medjool dates. I also love um, some of the black dates. Those ones are a bit, they've got a bit of a deeper, richer taste and they're a bit less sweet. But again, I keep all of them either in the fridge or the freezer because I just love the texture like that. Number 13, we've got chia seeds. These have been part of my diet mostly for nutritional value, but now that I am able to have dates and fruits, it's become a bit more of an enjoyable thing for me to have every single day because I make my chia pudding in the morning just with some water, mix it up, let the chia seeds soak, and then I'll chop up some dates into it, put some fruit, put some of the freeze-dried raspberries. So it's actually become a thing that I like versus something that I'm just eating purely to consume it. And last but certainly not least is water lily seeds. This is a food that probably not a lot of people have heard of. I actually hadn't really heard of it until about, I think it was around nine months ago, maybe, maybe a little bit more, but I was at the grocery store and I saw something that I'd never seen before and I looked at what it was and it said it was water lily seeds and that was something that sort of sparked the idea in my head of potentially trying it and I knew there was a very low risk so I ended up trying it and it was fine and now I buy them like this and I cook, cook them. I don't really know what the proper term is but I typically put them in the air fryer either on the dehydrate setting or the air fry setting and I'll put some olive oil on it, I'll put some salt, um, I've even done some sweet versions of it but it's delicious. It doesn't have much of a taste, it sort of reminds me of popcorn. Some people say it has a bit of a smoky taste to it, it's a snack that I can bring out when I go out with me, um, it's also just so fun to eat, it's something savoury, crunchy which was a huge thing that I was missing in my diet before. So this is definitely one of my favorite foods. Those are the 14 foods I can eat, at least for now. I am definitely hopeful and hoping that I'll be able to introduce more foods into my diet in the future. And that will come with trying different treatments and you know figuring out what it is that I'm reacting to and that's causing my body to be so reactive and why that's happening, figuring that all out. And that's what I'm constantly working towards. But honestly, right now, I am really happy with my 14 foods. Everything's delicious. I love my food. It's become so normal to me that it doesn't really faze me unless I'm around people a lot who are also eating and I'm not having my own food. That's only really the time when I'm, you know, I'm actively looking at other people and what they're having. And then that's when it really clicks that it's not normal because to me, it definitely seems so normal that sometimes I'm like, wait, other people don't live like this as well. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you have any questions below or if you want to see any other videos, definitely let me know. But thank you so much. I really appreciate your support and I'll see you next time.